So one of the most important tools we have in chemistry is the periodic table. It is a work of genius. It's taken for granted so often because you see it on every wall in every science classroom and everybody kind of knows that that's where the elements are. And, but to really understand the genius of this table, and it's going to take us a while to get there, uh, you have to understand a little bit about how it came about. So we want to kind of go back in history a little bit to talk about some of the work that led to the table as we now know it. There were many chemists and physicists that decided to try to arrange the elements that were known at that point in time uh, into some kind of order. And many of them had the idea that they could arrange elements based on their properties. As a matter of fact, there was a, a central idea that the elements, their properties, would sort of allow the elements to be grouped into very regular uh, sized groups. And uh, Newlands was the first to come up with uh, a way of doing that. He theorized that the properties of the elements seem to repeat every eight elements or so. And knowing about music as Newlands did, he related this to the notes on a piano that every eight keys, white keys, creates something called an octave. Uh, that's what octave means. It means eight. And so Newlands thought that the elements would arrange themselves into these groups of eight. He seemed to see that there were some patterns in the properties of these elements. Well, the problem was that uh, it didn't exactly work out perfectly well. And uh, the octaves that Newlands thought he was able to arrange the elements in well, they weren't exactly well arranged. Uh, and you can see that the elements seem to appear in rows of eight, but uh, but they're not. They weren't really. There wasn't really any hard and fast rules that held them there. Uh, another scientist at the time, De Bruyne, believed that you could group elements into groups of three, based on similar properties. He grouped together elements like lithium, sodium, and potassium which are all very similar in their physical properties and their chemical properties. But uh, while it was a neat idea, it didn't fit all of the known elements. There were some that didn't seem to fit into groups of three, and then there were some that seemed to fit with groups of elements that already had three in them. So that didn't work either. It took a chemistry professor uh, named Dmitry Mendeleev to really do the master work that led to the periodic table the way we know it. Mendeleev was Russian and he was a very dedicated and diligent worker and he started by arranging the 63 known elements at the time by their atomic weight. It had recently been possible to determine the atomic weight of an element, and there's a process of doing that based on relative amounts. Not really important right now, but uh, Men Mendeleev was able to uh, get the information that he needed. And he, in one version of the story, he wrote all of the information about each of the 63 elements onto 63 cards, and then he kind of started started to arrange them and sort them out. And finally, when he had an order that he liked, he, he wrote it down on a piece of paper. It looks kind of like this. What was interesting about Mendeleev's work was it wasn't perfect, but he did something that the other predecessors never did. He left spaces in his list, in his chart, for what he believed were elements that hadn't yet been discovered. The other researchers, the other scientists, believed that they knew everything about the periodic table and that they knew all of the elements. And so when the law of octaves or the triads didn't work out, they didn't know what to do. Mendeleev, when his chart didn't seem to follow a particular pattern or there was a break in the pattern, Mendeleev just assumed that there was an element or two that we didn't know yet, we hadn't discovered. And so he left a space. More importantly, 
based on the patterns that he was able to witness when he arranged his elements by atomic weight, he was able to predict the products, or the properties, he was able to predict the properties of these elements that didn't exist yet. And when they were finally discovered, his predictions were very, very accurate. So it took one more little additional piece by a scientist by the name of Henry Moseley. Henry Moseley was a physicist, brilliant British physicist. And one of his contributions to physics and chemistry was the an understanding of what's called the atomic number. Moseley was the guy who decided that the atomic number was going to equal the number of protons in one atom of a particular element. It's the atomic number that gives that element its identity because no two elements share the same number of protons. Moseley took Mendeleev's work and making just a few adjustments he, adjust, he arranged the elements by order of atomic number instead of atomic weight. And when he did that, the modern table that we're so familiar with began to take shape. Now, at the time when Mosley did his work, there were less than 70 elements. We now know of 118 of them. But the patterns that Mosley set up allowed us to continue to construct the table into its modern form.